After many requests, we finally reached it. I've had many comments ever since posting every MLB team's worst uniform, requesting me to cover the NHL in addition to the NFL and NBA, of course. So finally, we reached the fourth North American sport. So for uniforms, they can be any that have been worn over the course of the NHL's history since 1967, since that's when the league expanded from six teams to 12 teams. I am going to count throwbacks as any and all teams that choose whichever throwbacks they wear think they're good enough and marketable enough to bring into the modern era. Sure, one advantage is that hockey jerseys haven't changed too much compared to how much football jerseys have changed, for instance. But plenty of teams do a lot of questionable things regardless of the sport being played. Anyways, here it finally is. This is every NHL team's worst uniform. Chicago Blackhawks 2019 Winter Classic Uniform. The Blackhawks have the best logo in hockey, and that's an unbiased opinion. However, in this application, it's not so hot. The Hawks have had plenty of black jerseys over the years, but this is not the best of them. This looks unfinished, as if it's a first draft sketch rather than the final design. It's as if Adidas put off designing their jerseys at the last second and had to turn in whatever they had. Sure, the original from the 20s and 30s was similar, Similar to this, but it pales in comparison to all the other black jerseys the Blackhawks have had. St. Louis Blues 2020 Reverse Retro Jersey You might have expected that unused jersey from the 90s, however since that was never used, I'm not going to count it. But since this was used, oh yeah it counts. This puts the reverse and reverse retro. You know those Mitchell and Ness NBA jerseys where the color scheme is flipped? That's all this is. Honestly the Blues don't have much to criticize in their uniform history, very much like their city brethren the Cardinals. But frankly, I've never been the biggest fan when red was leaking into the blue's color scheme in the 90s, and this version has the red overtaking the blue. Sounds like a baffling decision when you consider one of their most hated rivals don red themselves. Ultimately, this comes down to taste, and I'm just not feeling this. But you know what I despise about this style of blue's jersey the most? The numbers on the back look squashed because they had to stay above this slant that runs along the bottom. Ugh. Just an ugly decision. Minnesota Wild. 2000 to 2008 and 2010 to 2017 red uniform ugly Christmas sweater. That's what this is. Now don't get me wrong, red and black have always been complementary colors, but in this form, it's puketastic. Initially, this was an alternate during its first run from 2003 to 2008, but starting in 2010, this was their main home jersey until the Adidas redesign for the 2017-2018 season. It's honestly hard to describe how ugly this thing is, but you know the old saying, a picture's worth a thousand words. Maybe it's due to having old times elements and modern modern elements clashing into each other, or perhaps the wild just look better in green? I'm honestly not sure how else to put this into words, but all in all, don't expect me to wear this at an ugly sweater party. Nashville Predators, 2001-2007 to Yellow Alternate. The logo on this looks kind of cool. The color? Why is it mustard yellow? What's with this dirty gold? I honestly don't know. This looks like the missing link between Jaguars Color Rush and Saints Gold Jersey. Just red. This was during a time when the Preds' main jersey color was blue, so logically they give the alternate color a jersey to itself with a different logo. And yet instead of using the bright yellow that highlighted their blue and white jerseys at the time, they chose this color. Thankfully afterwards the Preds' yellow jersey would get better. Dallas Stars 2008 to 2013 uniforms. You were expecting the one with the bullhead that looks like a uterus, the mooterus as it's been dubbed. However, that at least gives off the impression that the gears were turning in the heads of the designers. The opposite seems to be held true for these uniforms that the Stars sported throughout the recession days. We sure they didn't file for bankruptcy as well, especially compared to everything else the Stars have worn in their time in Dallas. This is the definition of a phone-in job. All three jerseys feature little to no green, which is disappointing since green has always been a staple of the team even back when they were in Minnesota. For the first season, the road jersey had the word mark which looks okay but still boring until Reebok made a white version of the black jersey as an alternate before becoming the sole road jersey in 2011. This looks like something a kid would do the night before a project is due. Oh yeah, let's just slap the city in a bland block text on the front with the number underneath it. Just pathetic. 
Redick. And even worse, the word Mark Road jersey had the most green, and yet that got the axe. Thank God for the far superior 2013-2014 redesign. Colorado Avalanche, 2009 to 2015 alternate uniform. Besides taking quote-unquote inspiration from the New York Rangers, this jersey almost seems redundant. Why have this blue jersey when you can have the regular one that sports their awesome logo? There was an early version of this jersey that Colorado had, except it was burgundy and not redundant. This, however, just comes off as Reebok crapping this out as if the Avs needed a third alternate jersey. It's the kind of thing made to fill a quota rather than something anyone would be willing to buy or even wear for that matter. Winnipeg Jets, 2008 to 2011 red alternate uniform. You know what? Thank God the Thrashers moved to Winnipeg if this is what they put out on the ice. The Thrashers jerseys have always been controversial, but honestly, I feel they're underrated, with an exception. It seems as if Reebok was really trying to appeal to Atlanta, so they made this jersey look like a basketball jersey with shoulders that remind me of football. It looks like it belongs in those photoshops where someone makes a basketball team version of a football uniform or vice versa. Obviously, in the end, this didn't work out and the team moved up north like Atlanta's previous attempt at an NHL team. And now, now, the team is a whole lot more popular in Winnipeg than it ever was in Atlanta. Arizona Coyotes, 2003 to 2015 uniforms. And now, the former Winnipeg Jets. When the Jets moved to Phoenix and became the Coyotes, their uniforms gained a unique look which is still cool looking today, to me at least. Then when they got their own arena in Glendale, which they got kicked out of after last season, that was actually designed to accommodate a hockey rink, they got new uniforms. The Coyotes rolled out a new look and kept that look for over a decade. Said look had a neat howling coyote logo, but felt completely naked. There are some white stripes on the home jersey and Sedona red on the road jersey, and it was okay, but compared to their 2015 update, this looks dull by comparison. The 2015 update makes this look like a practice jersey. It might not seem much, but those hints of charcoal gray on the sleeves does wonders to break up the Sedona red and white. All in all, some uniforms look better by adding more color. Edmonton Oilers, 2017 to 2021 home uniform. I've mentioned before that I'm a fan of the color orange while acknowledging that orange is not for everyone. I don't mind the idea of the Oilers having an orange alternate, but this wasn't an alternate. Well, okay, the orange jersey wasn't alternate when it was introduced for the 2016-2017 season based off of the Oilers' very first uniforms from the early 70s. However, it became the main home jersey the very next season in 2017-2018. And this might just be me, but I think Adidas made the orange brighter than it was on Reebok's take on the orange jersey. It might as well have come off of a reflective vest from a construction site. Check with one of the construction guys across the street at the Tims to see if he left it behind. I can only assume Edmonton did this due to having the exact same colors as the New York Islanders, so they figured to do this as a way to differentiate themselves. Or we could all blame Wayne Gretzky for making the Oilers blue jersey so iconic and very much what you think of when you hear Edmonton Oilers. However, in the end, the Oilers decided to switch back to blue at home for the 2021-2022 season and leave these orange jerseys in the rearview mirror. Calgary Flames, 2010 Heritage Classic Uniform. The Flames have only existed since the early 70s. However, this uniform was meant to homage Calgary's former professional hockey team, the Calgary Tigers, who had a similar look to this back in the 20s. Sounds fine and dandy, except the Flames logo looks way out of place with this 1920s looking jersey. Honestly, if they wanted to emphasize their point, they should have made a 1920s version of the Flames logo or even used the Tigers logo. But even then, this just looks like Gryffindor had a hockey team. Just Ew. Vancouver Canucks, 1978 to 1985 uniforms. Yeah, you knew the Flying V would be here before you clicked on this. I mean, it's different. And the color scheme was very much fitting for the era, but my god. Sure, the color scheme of black, red, and yellow works for Germany and Belgium, but in this application, well, it works for the uniforms they started sporting in the 85-86 season at least. Having a giant V dominate the front is unique but it also resembles something priests wear. But nowadays, the Flying V has ascended to so ugly its beautiful status. My guess as to how we got this during the design phase, the designers wanted more than just a giant V embroidered on the front like every other hockey logo, so they went with the V being on the entire
entire body. But alas, it was not meant to stay and was changed for the 85-86 season. Los Angeles Kings 1995-1996 alternate uniform. Definitely an experimental jersey, though this looks like the full Boy Scout attire done up as a uniform. The 95-96 season was the first year of the NHL having alternate jerseys, and some teams like the Kings wanted to do something completely different for their third jersey. You've got a silver sash going across the body with a captain patch inside if you were lucky enough, and an angry King logo that almost resembles the King from the CDI Zelda games or even the Burger King. He he tries to look threatening by gritting his teeth, but it looks stupid instead. I guess it's interesting to make it look like a king's outfit, but looks more like we're now in special minor league night mode. It's an idea to drum up attention and gets butts in seats. That's it. So come on down to the forum to trot out Wayne Gretzky in this ugly mess. Surprise, surprise, fans hated it and the jersey was scrapped after one season. Anaheim Ducks, 1995 to 1996 alternate uniform. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's have the jersey feature the mascot that's also wearing our regular home jersey. I assume that was the thinking behind this and even Adidas in 2020 when making the Ducks reverse retro jersey thought this is a great thing to homage. I don't know maybe Exhibit designed it. Sure the mascot Wild Wing is cool but having him on a top should be reserved for the kids section of the gift shop. Like their Southern Cali rivals the Kings this was an early third jersey so they opted to do something that wasn't present on their other two uniforms they were wearing at the time. However, despite the Ducks going 2-1 and one in the games they wore it, this uniform got shelled. I wouldn't doubt it was because the fans weren't feeling it, and frankly, I'm not feeling it either. San Jose Sharks, current reverse retro jersey. This is meant to homage the California Golden Seals, the Sharks Bay Area predecessor. While I myself am enough of a nerd to own Seals merchandise, they never had the prettiest uniforms, and this Sharks version is no different. It's a very puke-tastic 60s style that may or may not come with white skates. But furthermore is the discrepancy of a seal versus a shark. Seals are soft meat tubes with flippers that are only scary if you're watching Eight Below, Happy Feet, or Pingu. Sharks on the other hand, sharp, edgy, scary. Something you fear no matter what. So to have sharks in a very soft looking style, it does not work. You know how this could have been improved? Take a page out of Minnesota's playbook and have it be the sharks uniform in seals colors. Adidas, hire me. Vegas Golden Knights, 2020 reverse retro jersey. The whole concept of reverse retro is in the name. It could be a throwback or even mix old with new. The Golden Knights have only been around for half a decade so there wasn't much to go off of. The result is more akin to an early 2000s alternate with their alternate sword logo, which I guess was the point. But it's hard to imagine the Golden Knights donning red. Hell, I dare say they almost look like the Blackhawks. Yes, their regular home jersey at the time was dark gray, but that's the night portion of Golden Knights. Starting this season, their gold jerseys will be the primary home uniform. And honestly, the most unappealing part of Vegas's color scheme is the red, as if they added it so they wouldn't have a color scheme ripped from the Penguins. Frankly, their new reverse retro Retro jersey is the superior reverse retro jersey. Seattle Kraken, nothing. They just started last year, though that mascot, but ugly. New York Rangers, 1976 to 1978 uniforms. The Rangers, much like their Madison Square Garden roommate, the Knicks, have always had perhaps the most conservative look in sports. But in 1976, they decided to change up the uniform a bit, and of all the Rangers looks, this was not the best. Hockey jerseys that feature color bands on the sleeves don't always jive with fans. Just ask the Thrashers. And this is no different. I don't know, the general consensus seems to be that hockey fans prefer sleeve stripes over this. It's also oddly the only jersey in the Rangers history to not feature sleeve stripes and considering this only lasted two seasons, it clearly wasn't a hit. New York Islanders 2011 to 2014 alternate uniform. After the Mets got rid of their black jerseys, the Islanders simultaneously tried forcing it in. Cause hey, people liked it there and the Islanders have the same colors as the Mets. What's the worst that could happen? This. 
This is the worst that could and did happen. Yeah, people rip on the Isles fisherman jerseys from the late 90s, but I kind of like those. And hey, they're more memorable than this. The black and gray looks so forced with minimal orange and even more minimal amounts of blue. Nothing flows together, and after three seasons, the Islanders realized this jersey was not worth keeping. New Jersey Devils, 2021 to present alternate uniform. This sincerely could not have been the best Adidas could come up with. It's as if they took that Blackhawks jersey and made it blander. Apparently, the stripes are a reference to a team from 1930 known as the Newark Bulldogs, and yet both Bulldogs jerseys from back then look more interesting than this. I know that New Jersey's nickname is Jersey, but if you didn't know this was meant to be a Devil's jersey, you'd think it was a generic template. Maybe have New Jersey inside some chest stripes like that Black Bulldogs jersey you showed? Just a missed opportunity. Philadelphia Flyers 2002 to 2007 orange uniforms. Starting in 2002, the Flyers started emphasizing black more in their color scheme with orange being reserved with their alternate jersey. However, the logo, numbers, and letters starting in 2002 on the orange jersey look like the result of bad Photoshop. Why does the logo look out of focus? They had nailed the logo for 35 years at that point and even looked right on their other two jerseys, so what happened? I have no idea. The white bands on the arms also look messy and are just seemingly going in every possible direction. You'd think it wouldn't be hard to screw up the format of any of the Flyers uniforms, but they did. Pittsburgh Penguins, 2002 to 2016 uniforms. I know, what a sin putting the uniforms that Sidney Crosby debuted in, and also what the Penguins were sporting when they almost moved to Kansas City. The Pens sport the same color scheme as the Pirates and Steelers, black and yellow, or black and gold depending on who you're arguing with. After sporting a different logo from 1993 to 2002 made popular by the likes of Mario Lemieux and Yormir Yager, Pittsburgh decided to sport a pale gold rather than the goldish shade of yellow that's usually associated with Pittsburgh sports. However, compared to what came before and since, these jerseys don't look as interesting. There's less color breakup and just how pale the gold is in addition to just straight up being inferior to the yellow they've always had. Reebok in the meantime in 2014 released a throwback jersey that would later become the main jersey in the 2016-2017 season, and they've stuck with that since. Carolina Hurricanes, 2019 to present road uniform. The Whalers uniforms, absolute classics. Their uniforms with their now classic logo, immaculate. The black jersey with the new logo, incredibly creative. This absolutely phoned in. In. This is the only jersey with a shortened version of the team name, which sounds like an idea for an alternate jersey. But alas, this is not an alternate jersey. It's the main road jersey. Why couldn't this also sport the new Hurricanes logo? Or hell, keep sporting their old logo. Compared to the black and red jerseys, this does not look like it belongs in the same group. Apparently, this uniform came to be because owner Tom Dundon didn't like the old road jersey. I don't know what he was on while making that statement, but I wholeheartedly disagree. Columbus Blue Jackets, 2000 to 2007 uniforms. The Blue Jackets' original uniforms were decent, I guess, though they pale in comparison to the rest of their uniform history. Biggest point of contention for me is the logo. It says CB for the team's initials and both of Ohio's NFL teams. However, I find it interesting that while the name references the Civil War, the logo features 13 stars as a reference to the 13 colonies, which sounds more appropriate if the team name was a reference to the Revolutionary War instead. Yes, I know, the U.S. and the Union armies both wore blue, but Wikipedia says this is meant to be a Civil War reference. That, and it just looks gaudy. Maybe all the stars didn't do them any favors. Starting in 2007, the team started sporting a logo that features the Ohio State flag, which has been far superior. But alas, the logo was brought back in 2020 for their red reverse retro jersey. Washington Capitals, 2020 to present, alternate uniform. In 2018, the Capitals sported a blue jersey that said Caps across the front, where they beat the Maple Leafs 5-2 in front of over 29,000 fans at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium as part of NHL Stadium Series. A couple years later, the Caps brought it back. Kind of. Instead of Caps, the jersey sports a giant W. The middle of the W is meant to mimic Washington Monument, which you probably wouldn't be able to tell unless you look closely at it. It. The W itself, and this is quoted directly from NHL.com, <clears throat> 
stands alone as a capital letter to symbolize the strength of the nation's capital. No, looks more like the Cubs' W flag that they fly after every win. If you ask me, they should have just kept this blue jersey as is after the Stadium Series game concluded. Boston Bruins, 1995-2006 to alternate uniform. Ah yes, the Pooh Bear jersey. This was introduced as an early alternate jersey, but I think what gets under people's skin is that this lasted a decade, unlike other early alternate jerseys such as the Kings and Ducks alternates as mentioned before. The actual bear on the jersey has lots of shading, but it's not well done. What they should have done was have the main color of the bear be a lighter brown and the shading be a darker shade of brown, rather than a brown bear with lots of random black shading. And on top of that, it's not a threatening looking bear, especially compared to other bear logos. He looks more contempt, rather than anything to get the blood pumping, frankly. Heck, he even almost resembles my dog. By the way, is anybody else? aware of that upcoming Winnie the Pooh blood and honey indie film? Detroit Red Wings 2020 reverse retro jersey. Take the Red Wings regular road jersey but eliminate the red on the sleeves and at the bottom. Sounds pretty dull, doesn't it? Well, that's what Adidas did in 2020 for Detroit's first reverse retro jersey. Where's the color? It legit looks like a practice jersey. It's as if Adidas had completed the other 30 reverse retro jerseys, forgot about the Red Wings the night before the designs were due, and didn't even bother trying. Sure, they put gray on the arms and along the bottom trim, but that can't compete with Detroit's traditional red highlights. Toronto Maple Leafs. Next gen. Bieber black uniform. No, this isn't going to be a bash fest of Justin Bieber. It's not 2010 anymore. However, this is more than bashable. What the hell is this? You know, there are shades of blue out there that look good with black. The Carolina Panthers certainly come to mind, and honestly, no one else besides colleges. Yeah, black and blue is only fitting if you've had the crap kicked out of you. And yet, this was a big seller for the NHL. I suspect it had to do with it being a celebrity collection. Collaboration. It is interesting how the actual leaf has mixes of black and blue that you can even see on the sleeves, and this might just be me, but it hurts my eyes trying to focus on it. Frankly, the leaves would have been better off having the leaf be solid blue. And then there's the reversible side, which is there because I honestly don't know. Seems more of an excuse to show the Bieber side of the collaboration, with the little leaf on the chest mimicking Bieber's logo. Yeah, didn't need this. Montreal Canadiens, 2008 to 2009. 1912 throwback uniform. This is usually in the search results of worst jerseys and for good reason. And despite all the images of this uniform, the Habs only wore them twice, especially after a 3-1 loss to the Bruins. So we've returned to the valley of bad and cursed. What fun. Anyways, it's amazing how the Habs thought this barbershop pole looking uniform was something good to bring back almost a century later. It is... Well, it is interesting. Stripes were a thing for uniforms in the first half of the 20th century, but calling this excessive would be an understatement. Buffalo Sabres, 2013 to 2015 alternate uniforms. This looks like a hockey jersey from the early 2000s, except this was the early 2010s. Yikes. The logo on the front is alright, but what's with Buffalo written above the logo? Seems unnecessary, as if Reebok had extra thread and needed to use it somehow. The front is yellow while the back is blue which doesn't sound too bad but the layout of the blue makes it look like a ridiculous cape and then there's the random spots of gray now the gray being on the numbers and highlights is all right however the sleeve cuffs are gray. Why? It looks randomly tacked on. Frankly, they would have been better off continuing the yellow and blue down the sleeves. It's all these little crap things that add up to an overall ugly jersey. Ottawa Senators, 2008 to 2011 alternate uniform. In the prior 2007-2008 season, the Senators got new jerseys and their home uniform was changed from black to red. However, the next season, Ottawa wanted to bring back the black jersey and instead of taking their regular jersey and making it black, we got this. It feels so underwhelming to slap Sens on the front rather than what could have been on there. Oh yeah, the actual logo was on the sleeves, but it's not the same. And this might just be me, but black jersey plus nickname that ends with ENS makes me say something else when I read it out loud or in my head. Thankfully in 2011, this would be replaced by a superior black throwback. Tampa Bay Lightning, 2018 to present alternate uniform. 
uniform. The Lightning have showcased uniforms over the years that emphasize the meaning of the team name ever since their inception in 1992. However, this is the worst example to try that concept. It's just black that transitions to gray once you get to the sleeves. Compared to other black jerseys that came before, this feels underwhelming. But if you ask me, I'd be more for this if they didn't try to do the black to gray gradient effect cause the bolts have always looked slick in black in the past. But here, not so much. Florida Panthers, 2009 to 2012 faux back uniform. And lastly, the Panthers and their attempt to have an older look. A look that SB Nation's litter box cats dubbed the worst jersey in Florida Panthers history. Not gonna lie, this should have been red. It should have been red because the Penguins throwback that this homages was also blue, so it's distractingly similar in that regard. Granted, that was all baby blue, but this one features lots of baby blue too. Frankly, the Blue Jackets did a better job with this concept than the Panthers a year after this uniform debuted, probably thanks to the use of cream to differentiate the jerseys. Apparently, the rumor behind this jersey being blue was because Jet Blue was a big sponsor for the team. Sure, blue is a part of their color scheme. But whatever the reason, we certainly didn't need this jersey in our lives. So that will do it for today. If there was a jersey that was featured on here that you like, or you think something else should have been on this list, go ahead and leave a comment. As you probably are aware, I always encourage it. I also now have a Twitter that you can follow that's down in the description below. Anyways, see ya.